yeah, very difficult. The boys had a really good pre-season. They played some really good trial matches. Um, and there were a lot of issues when selecting this first team. You mentioned there were a few positions that were up for grabs. Any hints now which ones they were, maybe? Uh, I think it's... Uh, well, no. It, it, you know, I've spoken to the guys individually. Um, and there are a lot of disappointed guys um, this week. There's a... There's a runners game, a Brumbies runners game on this weekend, so I guess the good thing for the guys who haven't been selected is that they actually get some good game time this weekend, and uh, we tried to soften the blow with that uh, little upside, but uh, it was still very difficult for a lot of them to take, um, particularly when they knew, and it was the positions that we were looking at, they knew that they were close for those uh, uh, selections. Joe Powell, is he always going to start in Melbourne? Uh, before Thomas got injured? Going to be, it was going to be a difficult decision there, um, but once Thomas got injured, yeah, Joe is the one with the most experience, and uh, yeah, I think he's come along nicely in this pre-season, had a good year last year with us, but has come along really nicely in this pre-season, worked really hard to be competitive with training, and um, certainly deserves his position in the team. No, no, I mean, they all know how to play rugby. Um, they've obviously played at a, at a decent level before um, and there's there's no point putting stuff in their head leading into the game. It's just another game for them. They're combining with the players around them and I think that's what we've seen through the pre-season and the trial games. The combination um, has been key for us, making sure that we get the right combination on the field and we feel these guys uh, add to that combination. So we certainly have full confidence. That's why we've picked them. That was one of them. Um, Jared uh, has been sidelined a little bit through the pre-season, just uh, overcoming a bit of an injury. Um, and, and in that position, we had a, a number of contenders. Um, so Jared sort of covers six, seven, eight. And there are a few guys in those positions that uh, um, feel a little bit unlucky not to be in the team this week. Uh, we're not we're not approaching it that way. Uh, we've had a good pre-season. We feel we've had a good pre-season. We've had some good hit-outs in the trial matches, and uh, the guys are feeling pretty good. You can ask Karts about that, but, but it looks to me that their uh, energy levels and their motivations probably peaked this week. Um, so they should go into the game with with a lot of confidence. So yeah, I guess um, maybe a few people will write us off, but but internally, you know, we're we're going about business as though. We're ready to play. The record against the Crusaders is not great, but do you feel as though you know, this is a good time to start the first game of the season? You've seen the start of the season pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, our prep coming into the first game is something that we pride ourselves on. Um, I think the players look forward to this from the first day of pre season. So we've had a couple of trial games, but you know, all they've spoken about is the first Super Rugby game, so they're all pretty primed to play um, their best football this weekend. Uh, Crusaders, I mean, they've had some pretty good trial games. They've, they've played uh, Hurricanes and the Highlanders. They played in the Juco Tens and, and performed really well in all three of those games, uh, tournaments. Um, so I don't expect that they'll be off to a slow start. I know the New Zealand sides generally, because they don't have their uh, All Blacks players. Uh, back into the fold in the first couple of rounds. They're, they're normally slow starters, but I don't see that as the case this week. Uh, can you talk um, a little bit about Nick Mayhew? Um, obviously, a new guy who got starting at, at loose head there. Um, can you tell us a little bit about his development and what you're hoping to get out of him? Yeah, well, Nick came across from New Zealand. He played with the Blues last year, and um, he's an excellent scrummager. He's, he's got great awareness of where he needs to be on the field. So his understanding of rugby is good coming out of the New Zealand system. Um, but yeah, he's a top-notch scrummager, uh, which is, you know, we pride ourselves on set-piece. And uh, he's, he's fit into the mould of that loose head prop perfectly for us. Cuts, um, is it a little bit similar? Can you talk us through how you've seen him develop? He got his contract, what, just before or just after Christmas, whatever it was, and how have you seen his transition? Yeah, he came over just uh, purely to trial. 
with us pre-Christmas uh, with the training group and then yeah, around Christmas we offered him a contract on the back of his training and the way that he fit in with the group. Um, and then you look at his two performances uh, in the trial matches. Um, he obviously played, uh, had a rest from the Duco, but he played the two trial matches and I thought he played exceptionally well. Uh, again, talking about combination, uh, he found a really good combination out on the field. He steered the, the team around the paddock nicely um, and his skill set is exactly what we need. Targeted in attack, in their attack, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're solid defenders. So you sort of expect that every week, and, and most of our game plans revolve around the 910 channel. So uh, we've looked at a bit of footage, and, and we're well aware that they, they certainly like to come down through that channel. We've spent a bit of time on that. And um, Isaac as well on the bench. Um, he, he was competing with us for a, a contract there. Yeah. And now he's got a spot on the bench. Yeah, he was. Pre Christmas, he was training with the guys, and uh, you know, we had to make a decision. Uh, to go with Futz or to go with Isaac and uh, it was a really tough decision and uh, yeah I guess with you know just he picked up a bit of an injury through the pre-season um, but kept him out for a while and Isaac came in and gave us some good coverage there and then had an opportunity to play uh, in both trial games and then also uh, in the Juco competition up there and yeah, he probably had a rusty first game but that was on the back of little training we called him into the team that week and then the, the following week in Suarez he came on for about 30 minutes and played an outstanding game of rugby so um, he certainly earned his stripes in this team as well. Uh, Steve, you're flying out this afternoon will you have a bit of operation time on the ground here in Christchurch what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. L lucky enough um, you know it's always difficult coming out of Canberra going to New Zealand because you've got the connection through Sydney uh, now that we have a flight out of Canberra straight to Wellington it, it, it makes things a little bit easier but not when you're going to the South Island so uh, it'll be the same process for us, you know, head out of Canberra via Sydney, land in Christchurch uh, around about midnight New Zealand time. Um, it's not ideal, but it's better than going the, the night before, which is what we normally do. So Sandar have been kind enough to give us two nights accommodation before the game over there, which means we'll get a nice uh, morning uh, in Christchurch on Friday. We'll, we'll go out and have a captain's run at the stadium, uh, orientate ourselves around that stadium and then uh, get our prep in the afternoon. Obviously from this region it's, it's massively important, Yeah, I think there's a really strong proud history of rugby um, in Canberra, there's a, there's a really strong competition, I think we proved that when we first joined the Super Rugby competition uh, and even before that when we were invited up to the Sydney competition and um, you know, made the finals consistently up there. Uh, we, do have, we do have strong passionate uh, rugby followers in Canberra. Um, and we've been the most successful team, we're financially stable, we haven't borrowed from the ARU that we've all we haven't not paid the ARU back when we have borrowed from them. Um, and um, we've, we feel that we're improving as an organisation. Um, you know, we've moved out to UC now, we've got a, a really good facility here. Um, great grounds, great shared facilities here with the University of Canberra. Um, and the partnership with the University of Canberra is as strong as it's ever been. So. Um, yeah, I guess going back to the original question in terms of how important it is, it, well, for this community, um, like I said, there's a, there's a really strong support for the Brumbies down in Canberra, so it's, it's massively important we maintain it. Is that, um, I guess, is that speculation disappointing at the very least distracting? Oh, not distracting at the moment. I think the guys are well and truly focused on the first game, uh, and it'll be the same next week and the following week. It'll be a focus coming into the, um, the matches each week. Um, yeah, I guess at a board level and, and probably at an executive level within the organisation, we've had a few chats about it, but um, we're heavily focused on starting the season well. We've got this game this weekend and then we're, we're back home for our first game against the Sharks next week, so there's, there's a fair bit of planning around that as well. Carl, how are you feeling going into captain in the first Super Rugby match? I'm pretty excited, to be honest. Um, I've been down with the club for about six years now and it's a, it's a huge honour for me to captain the club that, that gave me a start and gave me an opportunity down here. So you're feeling pretty good? You said you were feeling pretty good. Yeah, no, I'm feeling pretty good. We've freshened up this week. Uh, we've been training really hard throughout the pre-season. I think we can take confidence in the work we've done.
what sort of advice can you give to those more junior guys who are running out for the first time in the Super Rugby? Oh, just stick to what they know, stick to our system. So we've been training hard over the last three or four weeks in our system, in our shape, um, in our procedure. So just back their confidence in what they were picked on. Cuts to the captaincy had any um, nerves to you for round one this year? I did a couple of weeks ago when I, when I was first uh, picked for captain, but not really. I think you're always a little bit nervous going into the first round of Super Rugby. I know I was last year, but... It's no different this year. I mean, we're excited to play. We're excited to get the season underway. And um, I'm really looking forward to the contest out there on Saturday. You seem like a pretty relaxed guy, but a few of the other players have said you've had your cranky pants on at times. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who said that. I think we're just keeping them honest throughout the pre-season, making sure we're doing everything we can to be fully prepared for this first game. How about having Christian back around this week? Has that um, helped with your transition in any way? Yeah, it makes my, uh, makes my job a lot easier. So having Christian up here, he's obviously an inspiration to the whole team and he's a leader around the park. So he sits in on meetings and comes to training sessions and talks to all the boys and keeps them in the right mindset and I make sure they're focused when we're ready to go. Does it, does it take the pressure off you a little bit to know that you don't necessarily have to get around to everyone and you've got Christian there as well? Yeah, well, Christian's naturally... Uh, a very people orientated person. He's um, he's great with all the guys, and he knows how to how to talk to everyone. So, yeah, it, to answer your question, it does take a bit of pressure off me, and it, it makes me feel confident having another bloke like that in the organisation next to me. Cut, um, you mentioned that the new faces in the team and offering some advice to stick to what they know, but is it on um, you guys who have been around a while to you know make sure they don't get ruffled because the Crusaders are going to try and get their faces all over them again? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're going to look look to our experienced guys and our leaders in the team to step up. I think we've got five or six Wallabies in that starting pack, so we need we need them to step up and they'll show the way for the rest of the team. Do you think that's been forgotten a little bit? All the talk in the off-season has been about who's left the club, but the fact that there is still six or, you know, what is there, eight Wallabies in the starting team or something like that? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a fair stint of us and there's a lot of blokes that got experienced last year and some of those players really came all through, came through well. We've got Rory, Alan, we've got Fards, you got all, all those players with that experience and you've got like blokes like Benny A on the bench who, who do bring that leadership. So we're, we're feeling confident in, in what we do and what we've got out in the park. So we're looking forward to playing on Saturday. Hey, Cut, you just mentioned Fards. How do you think he's going to cope without you in front of him running out? Are you getting your bit of like a say, Penny Mate? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm sure he'll be right. He'll be right behind me. He's been my roomie for three or four years now. So, like, uh, he only helps me. He calms me down. I calm him down when he gets a bit carried away sometimes. But it's it's good to have him there, and we work we work well together. So just one last one for me, Chris um, Alcock. What are you yep. expecting out of him? Obviously, number seven jersey in front. He's carried some great names over the years. Yeah, it has. How, yeah. how do you see? Him? Well, similar to what he's. Um, put on the park over the pre-season period, um, both at training and in the pre-season games. I think um, his understanding of where he needs to be and what he needs to do within the systems is top-notch. So uh, I'm looking forward to watching him play because I think he's a great player. In terms of ball fetching, like, yeah, probably everyone talks about Poe in that area, but yep. he's quite capable. Yeah, well, he's, picked at, he's picked at number seven as a ball fetcher and uh, he's got that capability. He's, he's very good at it. I think he's probably been underrated for a number of years. Um, and the guys, well, the guys love playing with him. I love watching him play. Well, good, thank you.